and welcome back. Let's say a prayer to get our hearts in the spirit. And just a reminder, if you didn't get one, these are our little communion cups that we're using. On the top is the bread and underneath is the juice. And if you didn't get one, Bob has some in the back. So if you need one, he can, you can raise your hand and he can come around and make sure that you've got one. So feel free to raise your hand if you need one. Y'all got him? Okay, let's say a prayer. Dear God, as we gather before you and we take part in this special communion service, we know that this is nothing magic. It's bread and juice that we are symbolically taking in remembrance of what you did for us at the cross. And as we read these scriptures and we take these emblems together, we also ask that you would forgive us, God, for the different ways that we have sinned against one another or against you, that you would bring forgiveness upon our hearts and our lives. And we thank you so much we can have assurance in your grace and your forgiveness and love for us. In your name, amen. Luke 22 says in verse 14, And when the hour came, he reclined at table and the apostles with him. And he said to them, I have earnestly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat it until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he said, Take this, and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on I will not drink of the fruit of the vine, until the kingdom of God comes. And he took the bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And likewise the cup, after they had eaten, saying, This is the cup that is poured out for you. It is the new covenant in my blood. And as I said, we do this communion together, not as some magic practice, of course, but as a spiritual practice, as part of our spiritual walk with God, an act of remembrance, of forgiveness, of taking part in that sacrifice, remembering what Jesus did for us. And it's a special chance for you to remember the moment maybe that you were baptized or the moment you first accepted Jesus into your heart, or if that's still a decision you're making, this is a time for you to reflect on that and where you're at with God in your personal walk with him. And it's a time for us to recognize that through him, all of our sins are forgiven. He promises to do that for us. And communion reminds us of that sacrifice he gave and the reason that he gave it and that we can come to him at any time with any problem that we have and we can ask for forgiveness and we can receive his love and Jesus always has arms that are open for us so now our elders Fred and Dorothy will each read some passages for us and share about what communion means to them, and they will lead us in partaking of the emblems. For those of you who have the cups, there's a special way this has happened. There's a little clear film on top of the cups that opens up, that releases the bread on top of the cup. And then the red film opens up to release the it was kind of hard for my big fingers. So the bread means to me that we remember the broken, Christ's broken body on the cross. We did that to him. Our sins 
give that to him. I'd like to read 1 Corinthians 11, 22, 23, and 24. For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's bow our head in a world of, word of prayer first. Lord, send us the Holy Spirit today in our hearts that we remember what our sins did for you. As we partake of this bread as a symbol of your body, Give us a measure of the Holy Spirit. And let us consecrate our lives to you. In your precious name, amen. You may partake. I want to talk about the wine and what it means to me and also about my baptism. I have a younger sister that she's two days less than a year younger than me, and her name is Connie. And Connie and I were always best friends. We went to 17 schools before we hit high school, so I always had a friend. And when it came time for me to be baptized, I was 10 and Connie was 9. And she says, I want to be baptized. I love Jesus. And so we both got baptized. And all our lives, there's nine in our family, but Connie and I are right in the middle. So we um, always, always connect very well and work. She lives in Portland, but when I go down there, we visit. And so uh, I'm thankful for her. And um, I have a verse today. It's in 1 Corinthians 11, 25, and 26. In the same way, also, he took the cup. And after so supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, uh, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And uh, we can uh, drink the, from the cup right now. A closing prayer together. Dear God, thank you for being our Father. Thank you for sending the Son. Thank you for being the Holy Spirit present with us now. We've taken part of these emblems, your body and blood. We have remembered what they mean for us. And as we part ways today and also reflect on the Christmas season and the reason why you came down to this earth to save us, to show us your kingdom that we can participate in now, I ask that 
you would just be with us as we reflect on those things this Sabbath and as we head into this time where we get to spend extra days with family and friends and loved ones. Comfort those who are hurting and missing loved ones that are no longer with us this year. Be with those who are excited about the family they will get to see over the holidays. Be with those who need this as a time of extra rest. Thank you so much that we can come to you, that we can have this deep relationship with you. We love you very much, and we're thankful for the way that you work in our lives. In your name, amen. You're free to go. Thank you.